Hello and welcome to the Million Dollar Message. This is your fearless Friday message with Callie DeBlander Brigham calling from beautiful Pensacola Beach, Florida. It's June again. (laughs) I don't know why I feel the need to have to remind you. I'm pretty sure you all are very aware that it's June, right? We are going to dive into um, week 10. We just have three more weeks, which takes us to the very end of June, which I love, in our book, And Then Some, um, the small workbook that was published back in 2005, and uh, I think needs a resurgence, doesn't it? I've had many of you ask me where to get it. I don't think it's anywhere to be found, but I am enjoying going over it with you. Before I do that, though, I do want to say um, I was talking to a group of sales directors working on finishing most all of them their first million. Uh, We've got a little boxer group going to cheer everybody on. They're finishing their first million. Uh, There's a couple of veterans in there, too, who are either supporting or um, doing another million themselves. And I just said to these gals yesterday, I said, my pastor says it like this, don't dig out, don't dig up in doubt what you planted in faith. And really what I was sharing with them, um, obviously that's a spiritual analogy, but also in our business, that those of you who have been in Mary Kay at least a year, and so last July, um, whatever you felt like God was urging you to or giving you a vision for or set your sights on last July, I want you to finish June with that in mind. Now, it may not necessarily be that you're finishing exactly what you thought you would be, but I want you to finish as if you are. And let's say that your goal was, I don't know, to sell 100 skincare sets and you've only sold 20. I'm not necessarily saying to sell 80, although that would be amazing. But what I am saying is finish this June with selling skincare sets. You know, there's going to be a lot of ideas out there, right, these last few weeks, and some of them may be perfect for you. But some of them may also be a distraction, and some of them may be a way to avoid finishing what you started. So I just want to, um, I just want to share with you that you can finish in the way that will make you realize that the goal or the dream or the vision that you set last July, maybe you just move the goalpost a little bit and the date that you finish with obedience. So I know that that is, I believe, something that um, I need to hear every June and maybe you do too. So today's week is called planning. Plan your work. A funny thing happened on the way to being organized. (laughs) A little thing called life. A little thing called June, right? Sound familiar? Parties that cancel, children who get sick. That was my daughter yesterday. Cars that won't start, computers that crash, take your pick. There are plenty of unforeseen circumstances that can have us switching gears from plan A to plan B, not once, but often several times a day. But while switching gears could send some people into a tailspin, with the organized, it's simply another day at the office. Do you have a plan B for when the going gets tough? Or for that matter, do you have a plan A just to help you get out the door? Mary Kay often said we should plan our work and work our plan. She knew the number one reason for failure was disorganization, just as she knew the number one reason for success was staying focused and accomplishing what must be done. Mary Kay was adamant about making a list and methodically moving through each action item until we were all, until all were completed. Those not completed by the end of the day were placed at the top of the list to be accomplished the morning after. Having a plan to follow can provide you with an incredible incredible source of power because it frees you from the exhaustion that results from having your thoughts and actions scattered. It also gets your business out of your head and into your hands where it belongs. Once you place your life firmly in your hands, you can actually start doing something about your goals. But women can't live by a detailed list alone. It takes you, powered by your discipline, to experience real progress. We all can be guilty from time to time of a little creative avoidance. You know, I need to run a load of laundry before I can make those calls, or perhaps I need to clean out that closet before I can head out the door. But we know it, the day before we know it, the day has passed us by. <clears throat> and we haven't begun to tackle anything of substance that we originally set out to do. But here's something to think about. 
Success is hidden in your daily routine. It's what you're doing when nobody is looking. So what's hidden in your routine? Part of a successful life or business is to be proactive, anticipatory, and ready to act upon the opportunities as they present themselves. That means it is often a good idea to rise, shower, dress the part, look the part, and act the part of a successful independent business person. You can stay busy by simply reacting to situations, but that's just that, staying busy. It's not necessarily productive, nor is it working smarter. So before I finish with a few thought questions and action steps, I just want to add to this too, to say in June, I like to ask myself this question, you know, is what I'm getting ready to do helping me reach that ultimate goal? Or is what I'm getting ready to do helping someone win today in their business? And so if not, well, maybe it just needs to be moved to July or maybe someone else needs to do it. You know, it might be good, but it might not be great. And when we just do all the good things, then I think that's when we find ourselves too busy to do the great things. So here's a couple questions. How could being proactive and planning out serve as a source of power in your life and in your Mary Kay business? How could that be a powerful source? Next, think back on your Mary Kay journey. In what ways did being proactive and planning contribute to your success? And in what ways? Did a lack of planning hinder your success? And what was the number one lesson learned from having experienced both success and failure resulting from planning or lack thereof? And lastly, in what ways can a lack of planning or being proactive damage someone's interpersonal relationships or self-esteem or ability to dream? So what could you do? Well, this says you could look through some cookbooks and magazines and select a few meals to prepare. Or now we can go online, right? Make a list of ingredients. Make one trip to the grocery store so you have everything you need. Have a menu and post it on the refrigerator where you and your family can see it. You know, I started meal planning this year, and it has made such a difference. Um, It's just helped me in every which way. Number two, make a six most important list to do six most important things to do with. Yes. However, keep it focused. And I would again add only income producing activities that will help you reach your June goal. And lastly, make a list of duties, tax, tasks, and responsibilities you're currently doing, business or personal. For each item on your list, do the following. Evaluate it. And if not something that must be done immediately or is moving you closer to your goals. Eliminate it, delegate it, or reprioritize it. So perfect for finishing a strong tune. All right, everyone. Have a great day, a great Friday, a great weekend. I'll see you again next week. Bye-bye.